Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima. Welcome back to Blue Boards. This time we're checking out Hornet Leader Carrier Air Operations by Danvers and Games. This game sounded really cool to me because if you don't know that name, Danvers and Games is actually responsible for one of my favourite board games of all time, which is Warfighter Shadow War. And after hearing about Hornet Leader, a lot of it sounded very similar to the point where I thought, oh, this is going to be so good. Whether it be changing up your pilots, choosing different pilots, choosing their equipment and sending them out on missions. Whether it be the tactical display up there, where you choose where the pilots go and what they do and how effective they are. It, it just sounded like Warfighter, but with planes. And I thought that sounded fantastic and I just wanted to give it a go. So I did. And unfortunately for me, it's infuriating. I genuinely cannot pick this game up and play it without finding myself wanting to chuck the entire box at the wall. For one particular reason, which we'll get into later. But for now, we need to explain the overall structure of the game. So you've got a bunch of different campaigns you can pick from and they all have a bunch of different things going for them like the time period which limits what planes that you can pick. It also tells you what weapons you have available to you, what targets will be put into the target deck via the targets that are shown in the top right corner and it even determines like hey this is a long way away your pilots are going to get stressed out and you can't carry as much. And it tells you the scores you will need to do particularly well in the three different lengths of mission, whether it be short, medium, or long. And it also gives you some special currency to spend on special abilities and special weapons. So there's a bit of variety going on there. And then you get to choose your pilots down the bottom here. And you get a certain subset of pilots depending on what campaign you're playing. The length determines what ranks you can pick and then you get to pick whatever planes you want depending on the time period of course and there's a ton of different planes with a ton of different options to them whether it be the a7s and the a6s which are really good at doing bombing runs the uh the hawkeye is that what they bloody call it that is mainly meant for staying out of the way giving you some benefits allowing people to attack twice do things like that and then you've got your fa 18s and your f-35s and all the other different kinds of planes that are good at attacking in the air and attacking on the ground and everything in between, right? But they've also got their own experience levels and over the course of the campaign, they'll level up. They'll get better. So for example, with Lightning here, here's his stats. So he's got a maximum stress of 10 and if he goes over half of that, he'll be shaken and he'll lose some benefits to his air to air and his air to ground. And he starts out with zero situ situational awareness points, which will allow him to attack twice if he spends one of them in the middle of a flight. So on average, which takes six XP to level up to the next level, that's what his stats are. But if we flip the card around to show his skilled side, you can see that he can have take a little more stress now and he's got a situational awareness point. So they'll slowly level up and slowly get better over the course of the game. And if you can manage to keep a pilot alive for long enough, they will do really well. They'll have some fantastic stats and you'll feel yourself getting a little bit attached to them and hoping they don't get shot down by a... Whoops, almost spoiled the surprise there. And you also get to choose how to equip them because all of these chits here, these are all bloody different weapons. And all of these weapons have different hit ratios, different targets that they're more effective against, and different ways of just going about using them. So you've got tons of strategic input into how they're equipped, into what they're good at, and what you're going to send them out to do. But of course they can get stressed, and if you let someone get too stressed, they're not going to be useful, and you need to let them sit and recover and relax, the, uh, relax and get some stress off of them because getting into dogfights too often can make someone go a little stir fry crazy. So over the course of a campaign's day, you will draw targets from the target deck. And these targets can be particularly interesting because they're all quite varied and they all have their own ways of going about things. So this is a minor airfield. It's got one site on every approach, so it's an emplacement like a missile launcher or a radar site or what have you. And it's also got one bandit, which is enemy planes, on every approach around the outside. Two sites in the center, 
one bandit in the center and it takes seven hits to destroy you can take four planes in order to uh it took four planes in order to get it destroyed and if you destroy it you get two vp and you get to move along the recon intel and infra tracks depending on what numbers are there and they'll give you bonuses like letting you see more targets each day having less sights in the center or needing to deal less hits to targets but it also uses the keyword system from warfighter in a few different ways so this is a secondary target. You can run it as a secondary mission on one day in order to take it out. It gets a plane every turn and it's fixed, which means that certain weapons will be more effective against it. But it's also got an improvement, which actually sticks around, even if you decide not to destroy it. And in this case, every target gets an extra plane in the center. So you want to get rid of that as quickly as possible. But of course, you can also choose to draw another target and find yourself facing down some enemy tanks, which might be easier to destroy for one reason or another. They've got more planes around the outside, but they're a vehicle. You might do better taking out vehicles with the planes that you've got available to you. It's all about balancing what targets you want to take on in order to get the most VP possible. There's also a bunch of things I didn't talk about with sites as well. Like, I'm not going to go through the entire target deck to show you. But you might also get defense missions where you actually have to go up against uh, waves of bombers that are coming in to bomb something. And you might get a scramble that will force you to take that mission. And if you end up drawing two improvements, they all need to stick around while you go and take out whatever is going on there. And thankfully, the game's got an absolute ton of pilots and uh, target cards. You can see the decks up there. So across the different campaigns and across different pilots, there's a lot of variety to be had and no campaign is going to go down the same way twice. Admittedly, one of the things I don't like about the, this game is that there isn't really that much in the way of a victory condition, except doing better than adequate. That's more or less, I think that's what the instruction book says about what you do to successfully win a campaign, but really it just ends up being about score attacking, which is a shame to me personally. So the events are actually pretty cool because there are three different kinds that can happen. The one up the top happens when you're about to deploy on a mission. The one in the middle happens when you start the mission and the one down the bottom happens when the mission is over and you're going home. And there are good and bad events that can happen that can throw things a little bit wonky a little bit. So again, it adds a little bit extra variability. It gives you a little bit more to deal with and it just keeps the variety going. And even the tactical gameplay is pretty cool because there it has a lot of things going for it. So it's a very simple to understand display. There are, let's just take one of these uh, bandits for example. I got, I'll take this one here. So this one here, it is a radar and a soft target. So weapons that are good against them will work on this thing. It's a 268 for its hit ratio. So it seems pretty painful to deal with. It can hit at a distance of three spaces three spaces if this thing is in the center it can hit pretty much any space on the board so you want to deal with that really quick and it can hit planes that are at high and low altitudes so this is incredibly painful and the way that these missions work gives you that little bit of unpredictability as well because the way it works is you choose the um you choose the target and put it down and then you get to draw the sights which are those things right you put them down around all the approaches so you know what all the sites are going to be and you know what approach you might want to take from the beginning but you equip all of your planes then you choose where they all go and then the the uh bandits come in which are the enemy planes which also go in the approaches and in the center so there's always going to be that little bit of things you can't be sure about when you're going to attack a target which is pretty cool all your planes start around the outside and over the course of five turns you do it in four specific phases. The fast pilots attack, the bandits and the sights attack, the slow pilots attack and then everyone gets the opportunity to move. You first, then any bandits that aren't in range to attack move into attack. So it creates this nice strategic gameplay where you've got to pick what side you come in from. You have to work out how to get all of your bombers and all of your offense into the center so that you can take out the target and it makes things nice and tense with all of the sites taking pot shots because sites when placed right can hit almost every space on the board and all the bandits moving in to take you out and all the ones that are already there continuing to lay down the fire creates a nice bit of tension 
And if you're flying a night mission, it's even cooler because those four phases I talked about happen in a random order every turn instead of the order I just mentioned, which ratchets up the tension even further. If it wasn't for that one massive problem that I just, I cannot for the life of me get over. So everything you've seen so far is great. The events are cool. The targets are cool for adding variety. There's a lot of different pilots and a lot of different planes to fly around with a lot of different weapons to equip to them. And the variety with the eight different campaigns and the way that the events and the targets work mean that the campaigns aren't going to play out the same way twice and there's a lot of room for replayability. But what lets it down in the end and what makes it incredibly frustrating for me personally to play is this little nugget. It's your standard D10, 10-sided dice. This is how you resolve everything. So let me just get a random weapon to demonstrate, for example. This is a Mark 83 bomb. It is useful for hitting ground targets, which usually involves sights. You need to roll a 5, a 7, or a 10. Now, you can upgrade this via say, um, the pilots having good air-to-ground skills. Or there might be a certain thing on the target which makes it slightly more effective to hit with a different weapon. But, at the end of the day, it all comes down to this bastard. There are... and here are the enemies, and here is the example I was talking about. So 6, 8, 10. If you get the first number, you take a stress. If you get the second... between the second and the third number, you take a damage which means you lose all the weapons that you have and you get some stress and if you get damaged again you get destroyed and if it's the third number your plane just crashes i just absolutely hate this dice rolling system because it's all based around 1d10 and one of the coolest things about something like warfighter was that it had two dice that you rolled and one would give you a sort of secondary effect that would help you out in the long run that would help you accomplish the goal if you were able to use it effectively. Hornet Leader doesn't do that. It's either you roll what you need or you don't. And then that comes around to the enemies as well, whether you roll low enough to survive or you don't. And as a result, I find myself just having some absolutely awful missions where I feel like I've planned everything out perfectly. I've done everything perfectly. This is an example in front of me, right, of a mission that I was doing as a start to my sixth campaign where I needed to get a ton of bombs in in order to defeat a 14 hit target. And I had 30 hits worth of bombs. I doubled up on the amount of bombs that I needed and on the way in, I used all of my air-to-air -air missiles and weaponry to make sure I could get there. Most of the targets were dead, everyone was over the airfield, and everyone had at least one bomb, although I had three planes loaded with the heaviest bombs I could get onto them. And when I rolled the dice for all of them, half of them missed completely, and a bunch more of them only got one hit out of the two or three that they were capable of. So it got to the point where I only got 8 hits out of 14 from 30 potential hits. And this sort of horrific luck, where it feels like you've done everything perfectly, but the dice just decided to work against you this time, just happens to me constantly. It's the reason why I've started so many campaigns and never finished any of them, because it seemed like every time I went on a mission, I would always end up in a position where despite the fact that I had planned things out so well, I had brought along enough weapons in order to be sure of everything, I somehow managed to miss a bunch of them by rolling an absolute ton of ones and just not having enough to get the mission done within the five turns that are required. And this isn't like Warfighter where you've got action cards, where you've got the ability to just sit and wait for a better opportunity to come along because you've usually got the turns to make it happen. And a bunch of other things along those lines. You've got some air-to-air -air bonuses and air-to-ground bonuses depending on the pilots you're flying, but that's usually nowhere near enough and you end up relying on just one dice roll and that dice roll often comes up bad. Hell, the reason why I don't mind Warfighter is because you've got a second dice, right? And that second dice means that while you might not kill someone on a hit, you might do something like 
suppress them or scare them away or what have you. It's just a nice little backup to make sure that horrifically bad luck doesn't immediately end a mission. And the fact that if you do what I do in Warfighter, which is always like tw take twice the amount of explosives you're going to need for a target, you'll probably still succeed based purely on the potential of the rolls. Meanwhile, with the uh, Hornet Leader weaponry, it's like you roll once and then the counter disappears and each plane can only carry like three weapons at most if you want to get the absolute maximum hits available onto a target. So it gets to the point where nothing feels reasonable. It doesn't feel like you can carry along enough bombs to kill anything. I feel like I could take along like 30 hit points worth of bombs, 30 hits worth of bombs, to take out five points worth of targets and still not pull it off just because this dice is so cruel that that is something that can happen. And as a result, as I'm playing Hornet Leader, it just doesn't feel like I have control over the situation. It doesn't feel like any of the strategy I do, whether it be the pilots I select, the targets I decide to go after, the way that I outfit my planes in order to get the mission done. It feels like all of that is completely irrelevant. And I'm just sitting there and I'm along for the ride. And considering that Warfighter manages to walk that fine line between being along for the ride and actually being able to make strategic decisions that'll help your, your position out immensely, I, I just can't help but be disappointed. I know this game came out before Warfighter, in fact it came out long before Warfighter, but it's just a shame, because if they took some of those uh, Warfighter principles and imported them into the Leader series, I reckon Leader would be just better in general. Sure, you could still have a little bit of, like, bad luck or other things, but you could, you could supplement the horrific luck with some other strategic things like adding action cards or adding the ability to scare off a plane or get a near miss on a target like if you if you dedicate a bomb to a thing and there's nothing there to stop you dropping it i don't know how you can still miss it, it just seems bizarre to me probably make more sense in world war ii of which there are versions of this game set in world war ii but i digress as a result of this dice roll system i just I can't play Hornet Leader. Every time I think about taking it out of the box, I'm like, how is the dice going to screw me over today? I don't feel like I have any choice in the matter. I feel like I'm just sitting back and watching it happen, and I don't play board games for that. If I wanted to sit back and let things happen, I'd watch a movie. And as a result, I find it really hard to recommend Hornet Leader. I was hoping for Warfighter in the Skies, and I got very little approaching that out of it. And so... Yeah, if you're looking for a more strategic experience that does modern warfare in a way that actually feels like it gives you choices, get Warfighter. Just don't get this. This has been Blue Maxima, and I'll see you all next time.